All right, guys. This is a little SCC touring class car. They brought down for me to throw a tune-up in. Uh, this car runs the T4 class, which is basically hat the car has to remain stock. You're allowed to pull the interior out and make things safer. Um, you can add the roll cage, seat, you know, just safety stuff is pretty much it. This one has a bone stock K20A2. I'm probably gonna run through the valve lash real quick just to make sure that's all perfect. Um, it also has a 55 millimeter restrictor right here. And I was just on scca.com. And I was looking through the rules, making, seeing what all we could do. And the road race classes that's coming up. Hey, look at there. There's the same car. So this is a touring class car, T4 class. You're, like I said, you're just allowed to modify safety equipment and that's it. And we'll be able to put a tune up on it and see if we can't find, you know, every little, pow every little bit of power that it has. Uh, we might be able to give it some low end or, you know, find something small or try to get the cam angles. But with the 55 millimeter restrictor, it'll definitely be a challenge. So they located that between the throttle body and intake manifold right here, just a 55 millimeter plate. Reduces the amount of air that can get into the plenum. And all we can do is run a stock air filter. So that's it. We'll play with some plug gaps and some new plugs. And that's about it. Try to find some power. So let's get to work. All right, let's check these plugs out. Looks pretty good. So I'll probably just check the gaps on everything. Maybe do the lash and then just run through the gaps and make sure everything's good. So we can see there's just bone stock cams in here and to take full advantage of the lash while it's cold or take full advantage of the cam while it's cold I'm gonna go ahead and adjust all the lash now and uh, just get everything straight ready for the race you know it's been probably revved countless times pretty high rpm and things get beat and moved around so let's just double check it make sure it's legit We'll start at cylinder one, then we'll do cylinder three, cylinder four, and then cylinder two. Just right off the firing order, we'll just turn 90, 90, 90, lash the valves, and then get into the computer and see if there's any power to be found. Okay, and I'm also gonna take all the intake valves to 10 thousandths clearance and all the exhaust side to 11. And the reason I'm doing it on the looser side of stuff is because as the car runs and runs and runs throughout the day, uh, things will get hot, swollen, and tighter. So let's just start on the loose side so we can take full advantage of the cam throughout the day. So that's my theory on that, and that's what I'm sticking to, and that's what I'm going to get done right now. Okay, we have our 19 millimeter socket right down there on the crank pulley through the access hole. We have... Our cam gears at TDC so that means we're doing cylinder number one take our feeler gauge and we go right under this between the top of the valve
and the lash cap. And that 10 thou slides in there pretty good and has a little drag on it, so we know that's what we want. So uh, that one's done. I'm going to run through them all, like I said, and go 10 thousandths on the intake and 11 on the exhaust. And as we get heat in there, things will expand and change and tighten up a little bit. If, if my feeler gauge wouldn't slide under, I would adjust this nut right here until it slides under and has a little drag on it. And that's it. Um, you can see the cam lobes are all the way at the top and away from uh, pushing the spring down. And that's all you're trying to do. Uh, just be on that side of the, the cam. So let's go ahead and do them all real quick and move on to tuning. So when I lash the valves, I use this cool little tool. This one I think I got from the Cornwell guy, but there's tons of different brands and styles. Um, but you can see it has a 10 millimeter hole there. And then this is a straight screwdriver that comes down from here so I can hold the top of it in place and then adjust the lash out. It's uh, just, I've made one before, but having the, the right tool for it just, I mean, it makes it so fast. Kind of silly not to get one so all right let's get it done this one right here i gotta just loosen a little bit and then move on little drag good to go okay it's kind of hard to see here but there's an arrow right here this arrow is going to face right here and then that's going to be cylinder three I'm gonna do that real quick. So let's get that round of cylinder three. So remember the final order is one, three, four, two. So we're gonna do all the timing in that order. And if you see now, the cylinder three lobes are both pointing towards each other. If this was a B series, they'd be point away from each other. But that means we're on the low part of the cam, so we can adjust that cylinder out. And then we'll move to cylinder four. And then two. So two, the arrow will be pointing towards the firewall. And our cam lobes will be right there. There we go. Let's do this. <laughs> all right. So we got that all back together and everything wrapped up. I moved the ground from this point here to this point here. Um, something Hondata recommends to everybody. Keep noise down. and better ground I guess so we did that as well so let's see what kind of power this helped with and after adjusting the lash the only thing we hear are the injectors click themselves so it's pretty good getting the fuel out putting some 100 octane in it which is the limit for the, what they can run and then uh, we're ready make some pulls I got a pretty good base the other day and the only thing we've done now is lash the valves and switch and switch the fuel to uh, 100 octane and we're gonna yeah make it another test rip see what changes that did and then uh, start applying work to the map <laughs> Band, looks like you need a little love. Yeah, and I might have to put something else in there because I don't know if this is ragged. It doesn't really change much. Yeah. It's bouncing around. Make a bunch of racket here. Yeah. Alright, 
so I got the log up. And you see our wide bands just all over. So I don't really trust this wide band at all. V Tech needs to change. Cam angles need to change. Cam angles need some love. Yeah, we should be able to find some mid range. The top end is pretty dang close. It definitely picked up some top end. So, all right, let's go to work. Let's see what we can find. I want to, because we got a 5,000 RPM is where it is right now, but to bring it in lower, I need to add some cam angle, which could pick up that whole bottom end and then change where VTEC comes in. So, we're gonna check out what we got for angles in this bad boy, which they just basically highlight everything looks like and put it at 30, 30. Which works and all, but we're trying to optimize all the power throughout the band. And that may require some more angle to get us where we need to go and then bring it back. But I do like 30 on this cam. It is a good place to be. So the whole point is to bring in the cam angle and then taper it out to have top end. Having it all one number like this, you're just kind of fixing it in one spot, it's similar to having a cam gear, which is cool, it works. But we'd like to try to take full advantage of everything. So to do that, we need to add some angle, and maybe we can get some, pick up some bottom. And you'll get a good idea of what this stuff does. These first settings may not be right, but it's a start. And we'll see what kind of changes it makes with these changes. So. Reading everything, trying to find a good spot for it all. I may interpolate it just to give me a nice linear curve. So the cam doesn't have to work real hard and everything can be just happen. Get Dory. Make power and sing and live and be happy. They had a pretty good rev limit spot, so I don't see changing that because the power curve is off. Unless we can pick it up, which is the goal. We may need to tie another wide band in it as well because I don't have that. I might put a torque pickup on it too, test that on the new dyno uh, software, and see where stuff is letting off. Torque was noisy there. Oh, it's on time on the bottom. Oh, there we go. That looks better. So you did smooth out this some. Yeah, you see it. Yeah. All right, I pulled a little timing before I go mess with any more cam angles and I move VTEC down. So I'm gonna test that real quick and let it rip.
pick up that a lot. And some in the middle there. Green one's the new one, yeah. So you picked up there at the... Man, that green one's hard to see from here. It is hard. I'm going to try to do that. You picked up on the front, for sure. Let's see if we can't find an inch. When you're messing with a naturally aspirated car like this, you're just trying to find every little bit. And you're going to fudge up, you know two or three horse so in splitting those hairs you're just trying to finesse it and fine-tune it as good as you can because there's always gonna be some little variable so you can keep her in some kind of window and just keep it ripping that's all we can do okay a little bit of the tuning um, you saw we lost a little marginal power right up here we'll get to that but what's really cool is seeing what we gained back in here Okay, you can see where VTEC hit before, and we were out this much power, right? So the green one's the one I just did, the red one was the first one we did today with the new fuel and some changes, <coughs> valve lash and stuff. But you can see right here is where I got VTEC kicking in. So I'm gonna try a little bit sooner. I could lose, but it's worth the knowledge to know. Because if we can increase this power through here, right? Because the car's gonna live in here a lot while you make changes and gears you know and just trying to drag the car out of a corner etc and then we'll try to increase this up here and hopefully we can make a little bit there um i mean when i first looked at it, it looked like it looked like there was some left on the table but it's it's hard to say now that we're going you know because it's well it's i got a little heat in it i mean this was cold but if I can make all of this low end smoother, that's just gonna help road racing all together. Cause you know, you switch down and you end up lugging it sometimes and you just need that thing to kind of pick up and go. All right, so we made a VTEC change, we cooled stuff off. We're gonna go again and see where we're at. top end and I believe the top end came um, I did change the cam angle that little bit and I actually dropped some timing I took some out uh, it liked it a lot up top yeah we're, we took uh, probably two and a half degrees out of the top and the cam angle um, I phased it in a little different and I, I obviously I have more angles, so um, up top it was happy. Yeah. I don't know what the middle was like, so I might go back to what we had. Or something. Well, the middle, the middle it picked up a lot until this same spot where it dips every time, but it was back into it harder. Maybe if I got an RPM on there. No, it wasn't reading good, so I pulled it off. Oh, okay. Damn it. Maybe we try the big one with the loop. So if I can figure out where No, I did the big one with the loop. Yeah. If I can figure out where that spot is, I can figure it out. Here's where it's going to live. Yeah. That's what I think, too. I mean, there's going to be some low end grunt and, you know, some bogging out of a corner or something or being stuck behind someone. You're like, bah. So getting it to pick up. And dude may just keep it wrapped out. You know, I don't know. Let's take a second and assess this and then come back. So we have the first graph and the last graph of where I got where I am. So VTEC may be just a little too low. We got a little low that we lost some power. So we'll, we'll move that back into here. I'll try 4,400. But you can see in here we gained a bunch of power. 
we gained. Power is more minimal. This is the cam angle area we just changed, so we're gonna see what that does. But we picked up here and we carried more out the back. Um, so we'll keep finessing that until we can get really every inch of power out of it. Naturally aspirated, you gotta fight for every yeah, inch. Yeah, that's it. But right in there, that's pretty decent gain. I don't know what that is there. So I picked up Four, one, six, six, horsepower. six horsepower there and then something back in there. 17 to 25. So this was a six horse gain and that's eight. So not bad. Alright, so this could be our lull right here. You can see this little dip right in here on the cam angle does this little number so I'm gonna to try to follow this up and just make it a solid curve and see if that'll pick it up or not this is all testing so I don't know exactly I saved the previous file so I don't have to go back and forth so if this doesn't work I can just put the other file right back in there's no, no harm no foul so all right there we go Still getting used to all these new dyno controls, they're pretty cool. <laughs> it's working out. Um, so we tried to get fix the little lull in the cam angle area in that uh, 6500 area and then we uh, moved VTEC up another 100 RPM. So we're going to test this out see if we made any changes, successful changes. Some on the front, you did pick that up a little bit, but you killed some on the front. So, how far did you move VTEC from four to 44? It was at 43, it went to 44. It might just want to be 43. Yeah, because when I looked before. So the green one is the new one. Right. Is it, is it in the same area as the... See the blue one where I put it before? It was on low? Right here? No. It's going on right here. Yeah. No, now it looks like it... I don't know. It might have... That's not VTEC. That's no. So VTEC should be alright. Maybe it's just that cam angle right there. That's all that would be. But if it's marginal. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's what, three horsepower. 193, so we matched 193.9 compared to 193.5. Okay. It's not a lot, but like right there, you know, oh, maybe it is a lot. 167 to 170. That's about three horse, yeah. I'll save this and then I'll make the changes. You guys can see the log. Cam angle on top. 72% beauty cycle. Alright, so this wideband number is not correct. You can see it just stays the same, it doesn't change. So. I mean, already did you feel this, but it would really be sweet to touch 195 to 200. <sighs> That's why I'm saving after every pull, just so I can put yeah, right back. Get right back to something that we know works. Yeah.
car. Oh, 193. So, orange. Give it more on that cam angle. Spiking it? Yeah. It's like inch by inch. Maybe go a couple degrees on that. Okay. You know, let's just make a big change. Okay, let's see. See if it tanks or not. So that was 193.7, but it picked up in some good spots. You know, your dip here came back out of it some, and we're still gaining right there. And that's 63. Let's have the last, last couple. Two. Okay. Yeah, that way we can just those, and then we'll look at the original. Okay. All right, guys, we're getting in deep on this thing. We're trying super hard to make every little bit of power we can. And having a blast doing it. <laughs> this is cool. All right, let's go. thing you're trying here. Sound like you got something up that little sleeve. We'll see. Oh, playing with those tables, huh? There it is. Brakes off. Running screens on. Boys, I hope you're ready. We're working hard for every little bit of horsepower. I'm hoping this change gets us over the top. It's our goal. Getting my somewhere. Head. Yeah. Well, what in your head? We talked about that. Yeah, I think we, talked about that. <laughs> we just did the heat. <laughs> no way. Man, and look how much it like oh, flattened out right here and right there. Okay. I gotta see it. I gotta see it too. See it fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you want the last run? Let's go to the last run and the first one. And the very first zero. Yep. Oh Woo. man. What a so, deal. What a right, deal we're rocking here. Right here. You know, I still could probably put the... 14 to 126. And then... 
I put the 10 horsepower in the middle. Jeez. And then yes. Seven at the end. Seven at the tip. That's great, dude. That's a wicked ride. That's a, you could probably go back another 100 on the VTEC almost. Well, I don't know. I think, because I think VTEC, that might just be where you're that's standing. why I'm losing. Well, that could be why I'm losing this, because I could have VTEC too, too soon. Yeah. But I'm not worried about that so much. This is, this is what's wonderful. Oh, man. There's not a single place. Like, that's the closest spot. Right yeah. There. That's the closest spot. And What's it matter? It's a horsepower difference. Like, and it doesn't even matter. No. Man, I love a K-Series. So to me, this is a pretty big deal, pretty cool that we can be involved with these guys. They really take their time. They really do it right. And man, it is just paying off right now. This is a really, I mean, it's so simple. You basically buy a car, get all the safety stuff in it, some suspension, the motor, tranny, clutch, all that stock. And then you're allowed to put an ECU in to tune that. And then that that's it. That's all you get. Suspension, all you can do is coil overs. That's it. That's, it. that's all. Have to stay stock and that is how we're making Acura great again, <laughs> folks. Just like this. This is awesome. This is an honor and a privilege and just way rad to be able to tune this car. Whew. That's what it's about. This is something cool to be a part of. This is awesome. This is like third generation in this family. Yeah. In Hondas. Yeah, that's sick. I think we gotta put a PFI sticker on the door. <laughs> um, like I said, K-Series parts. Chris Dye over there, he hooked it up with these guys. He works with them a lot. And uh, said, hey, I know a guy that can tune it for you. And they brought it up, and here we are. So big shout out to K-Series parts. It's kseriesparts.com. Go ahead and check them out, get some parts, and uh, let them know we're grateful he brought it down because this is a rad video, this is a rad trip, this is a rad tune. You guys are learning a little bit of K-Pro, we're going over cam angles, we're messing around with it all, and that's what we're doing. So Jamie and I had a kick-ass time tuning on this stock K20A2 in the, this RSX. Little SCCA touring car, finding every little bit of power, playing with cam angles, playing with ignition timing, fueling, kind of just going over everything and just trying to dial it in the best we can and uh, having a good time doing it. I think adjusting the valves out, regapping the plugs, all of that just all came together and made a better product in the end. So we appreciate you guys hanging out. I hope you learned something. Give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.